Hey VC, I'm back with another video. This is a big edition of The Mail. I got one thing in the mail today. Wasn't going to make a video just for that one album, but then saw that I had a couple things that I hadn't showed off already. So figured I'd just make it a big ass episode. Uh, these first couple albums were all in one lot. I bought off eBay for $15, which is a pretty good deal. Three of the albums I already have. Three of them I didn't have. Uh, the first one is the Michael Schenker Group. Uh, I think this is their debut album. It might be the one with the MSG logo that's the debut, but this has some great songs on it. Uh, Lost Horizons, Into the Arena, uh, Armed and Ready, Cry from the Nations, Victims of Illusion. Uh, it's just a fantastic album. I already have it, but don't mind having another copy. Then we got UFO Obsession, another great album that I already have. Then The Wild, The Willing, and The Innocent. Then on to the ones I didn't have, uh, Mechanics, which is a great album. Uh, no Place to Run, which is probably my favorite UFO album without Michael Schenker. Uh, Andy Parker, I think, or Paul Chapman. I don't know why I said Andy Parker. Paul Chapman, the guitarist that replaced Michael, is fantastic. So, yeah, if you never listened to this album, definitely check it out. I might leave a few links below to some of that stuff. And then the next one is UFO Making Contact, still in the original Shrink. This is a fantastic album. It has... Um, Neil Carter on keyboard and he even sings on some of the songs and he is uh or he played with Gary Moore on a lot of his stuff and even sang on some of it so it kind of has a Gary Moore type feel to it I think uh after listening to it one time uh but yeah really good album very happy to own it the next album is one that you know I usually don't do this a lot I don't listen to an album one time and decide I want to buy it I listen to it a couple times and then figure out if I want to own it or whatever but this album, I listened to a couple songs off of it and immediately bought the album. Uh, I got this nice German press of the album for like 10 bucks on eBay, which is really cheap. Uh, it's a fantastic album. It is the Supergroup Phenomena. This is the album Phenomena 2, uh, Dream Runner. This is the album that has Glenn Hughes, Ray Gillen from Badlands, uh, John Wetton from Asia on here, Mel Galley on guitar. Uh, who's from Trapeze with Glenn Hughes, Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy, uh, and then you have Neil Murray on bass uh, from Whitesnake. Just some fantastic players, and there's even more. Uh, but those three singers are some of my favorite singers. I mean, Ray Gillen's one of my top favorite singers. John Wetton from Asia is fantastic. And Glenn Hughes, of course, is a great singer. Uh, got the original inner sleeve, it's got some pictures, and then the lyrics. And the album itself is in great shape. Looks like it was hardly ever played. It's got some dust on it, but other than that, it looks really nice and it sounds great. Uh, if you've never heard this, I'll leave a couple links down below. Some of the songs on here are just fantastic. Like the song that John Wetton sings on is sounds a lot like Asia type of music, like an AOR type. Uh, it is pretty keyboardy, but I like that. I prefer that type of music, really. So, yeah, I love this album. And this next album I already have a copy of, but this one is definitely an upgrade. Uh, it is Gamma One, the first Gamma album. What makes this so special is that it is a white label promo on Electra. The vinyl looks unplayed. I played it one time and it sounds fantastic. No scratches, no scuffs, anything. So definitely a, an upgrade for my other copy. And there's the gold stamp and what makes this even cooler it is autographed by Ronnie Montrose, which is one of my favorite guitarists. Uh, don't know if you'll be able to see it because it is in black Sharpie, but it's a really big, really nice signature. I'm probably going to frame this up on my wall because it looks really nice. Uh, I actually picked this up for under $10, which was fantastic. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's authentic. I've compared it with other autographs of his, and it looks real. Uh, even if it's not, I mean, it looks nice, and I paid little to nothing for it. Uh, but yeah, definitely happy to add that to my collection. Like I said, he's one of my favorite guitarists. This is one of my favorite albums. Uh, so yeah, and then the last album, the one I got in today. Uh, this album, I've been looking for for quite a while. It's pretty rare because it was only pressed in Japan when it was originally released. And I don't think there's ever been a vinyl release since then. Um, but yeah, uh, got this for a hell of a deal. It was an auction, and I bid on it and won it for $20.50, which is really cheap compared to what it usually sells for. Uh, like I said, it is a Japanese release, so it usually comes with an Obi strip. This one didn't, but copies that don't even have the Obi strips uh, usually sell from $40 to $60, and ones with the Obi are like $100 and over. Uh, but yeah, for getting this for half of what it usually goes for in the same condition, uh, very happy to add this to my collection. 
It is Quiet Riot 2, the second album with Randy Rhodes on guitar. Um, it's in really nice shape. Got a couple corner dings and stuff like that. Uh, in the pictures on the auction, uh, it looked like it had some bad ring wear on the back, so I was kind of worried about that, but in person, it doesn't look that bad. Um, yeah, this is another album that I'll probably frame up on my wall because the cover is really nice, and I never thought I'd own a copy of this. Uh, it still has the original inner, or insert. It has been folded. It's not in the best shape, but still has the insert, which is cool with the lyrics on it. And then the album itself looks almost unplayed. There is not a scratch, a scuff, anything on this album. So that's what was really cool about this. The cover was nice, but the record itself looks like it was never played. Uh, so yeah, very happy to own that. I'm a big Randy Rhodes fan, and you know, owning his early stuff uh, is pretty hard to get. Uh, so yeah, very happy to have that and all the other stuff I showed. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.